as scientists, we are always looking for extremes, the extremely cold, the extremely thin, extremely fast, because every time when we reach the boundaries of nature, we have a chance to get a hand on new states of matter that are not yet known. So we are all trying to approach the boundaries in each of us in different ways to understand how matter behaves when you are close to this extremely difficult to reach limit. It's a little bit of a boy's dream to take a laser and to blow stuff up. I myself use to burn stuff all, all the time, you know, with a magnifying glass. And what we do in the lab is basically something a little bit more, uh, let's say, sophisticated than that. But in the essence, it's the same. It's the same fascination. You want to know what happens when you when material interacts with extremely strong laser pulses. It brings together two fields that I really like. And one, one field of physics is called optics. It's the study of light matter interaction. Um, and the other uh, field of study is, is the study of condensed matter physics, of solid state physics, where you study the behavior of electrons inside a solid. And this research of ablation basically uh, brings these two fields together and, and tests them to, to the ultimate limit because you, you have to go far beyond the kind of physics that is in textbooks. In the lab, we go far beyond the approximations that one can make there. All the theories we are using, we understand them as having a limited range of validity. And one of the direction in which they might stop to be valid is as you increase the energy. The very consistence of the theory uh, really uh, requires you to change them in a dramatic way when you reach certain energy thresholds. So in that sense, we have to do something uh, more complicated than just increasing the energy in our equation and seeing what the equations spit out. Most of the time, we have to find new equations. And that, in some sense, is the most exciting part. Uh, you're trying to understand uh, what are the new laws that will apply at these different energy scales. The laws of physics in the early universe might change in a dramatic way when we reach such high energies. We are talking about high temperatures and also high densities. This is actually also what we had in the early universe a few microseconds after the Big Bang. What you can say is actually also that uh, with the particle accelerators that people sometimes say we create like uh, small or little Big Bangs. So what fascinated me is actually uh, it is a way to uh, have an access to learn more about the constituents of uh, atomic nuclei, the quarks and the gluons. Uh, so my uh, basic interest was uh, even before my studies actually to look, I mean, what are the fundamental constituents of matter? It's interesting how the tools that all our people here are using, that these are all the same tools that we just apply to different physical phenomena and they work very well. And so that's something that binds us together and that forms a nice theme, coherent uh, set of um, uh, ideas and tools that uh, uh, we equip ourselves with and we can use to tackle various kinds of problem in nature from, from the large cosmological scales to subatomic particles and everything in between. Uh, uh, that I find very exciting. Uh,